Hey folks, welcome back to MGBs and Other Stuff. If you enjoy this channel, please consider liking and subscribing. I don't know if you've heard about the forest fires in northern Ontario and Quebec, but they're really affecting a broad area. Here in Niagara, the fires are about 500 kilometers away, but the smoke is heavy enough to blot out the sun and make it hard to breathe. The weather map shows that there's not a cloud in the sky, but the smoke maps tell another story. Most of this video was shot a few days earlier, and we've had some very hot and humid uh, days. Luckily though, my wife bought me this canopy so I can work on iris outside on the driveway. And I have to tell you, that it's made working on iris much more comfortable. Today's video is called Odds and Sods, and that's informal British speak for different kind of things that are usually small and unimportant. So we're gonna talk about my faulty headlights, uh, speedometer cable routing, uh, cosmetic carpet correction, and a leaky rear end. Not mine, that would be a whole different video, but iris's leaky rear end. I don't often drive Iris uh, when it's very dark out, uh, but the other night we were at my father-in-law's for dinner, and on the way home it was just getting a little dark, so I switched the headlights on, and of course they didn't work. Fortunately, the high beams did work, and was, we were able to get home with some light. So the headlight switch has three positions, off, running lights, and headlights, or headlamps. I just put the switch in at second position and the running lights came on, uh, but not the amber portion of it. Uh, now the third position and the headlights should come on, but they don't. Uh, but when I engage the high beams, the headlights come on, but they don't seem to be as bright as they should. So I figured that it wasn't the bulbs themselves, since both headlamps are behaving the same way. Anyways, my first thought was that something was wrong with the switch. So I took it out and cleaned all the connections, reinstalled it, and it didn't correct the issue. Then I thought maybe the high beam switch was defective. And these early cars have the old school foot pedal switch uh, and newer models would have had them on the indicator arm. So I went down in the footwell for a look-see and then did what I should have done in the first place and started looking at wiring connections. And lo and behold, it appears that I forgot to put one of the wire supports back on when I reinstalled the pedal box and then discovered a disconnected wire. I actually went back to my video on installing the pedal box and saw that the wires were disconnected when I was installing it. So something must have happened during that installation. Anyways, I got the clip back on and then used a cable tie to secure the choke cable and the headlamp wires up and out of the way. And I'm wondering if that little bracket with the hole in it is meant for the choke cable to pass through. Maybe somebody out there knows. I guess in my haste to get back on the road, I got a little sloppy. Anyways, I'm glad that it was a simple fix and that the lights are working perfectly now. The next thing I wanted to address was this speedometer cable. 
and I'm not sure if this is the proper routing. It sort of comes out of the bulkhead or the firewall by the master cylinders and travels across the heater shelf and then down past the starter and finally it ends up in the, the gearbox. But I noticed when I was testing the new spin-on uh, oil filter adapter that I put on and I was using the celluloid button on the uh, starter to turn it over uh, that when the starter was engaging the cable was being knocked around quite a bit by the starter itself and I thought yeah, this is probably not good. So I'll show you what's going on here. You can see the cable running down by the inertia starter and I'll turn the engine over using the solenoid button that's located right here. Now I don't want the engine to start so I'll disconnect the fuel pump. This also comes in handy for doing compression tests. If you have one of these starter solenoids fitted to your car you probably already know that there's some precautions you need to take prior to using it and you usually only make that mistake once or twice and you've learned the lesson. So I always make sure the car is in neutral. I also engage the parking brake and then turn the key to power it on. In this case I've disconnected the fuel pump and I can't hear the pump so we're good to go. So I'm not sure how I'm going to keep this cable out of the way. I thought that I could tighten this clip, but for now I think I'll just snug up a zip tie around the cable and the brake line here. This is just a short-term fix and I'll take a better look at it at another time, but for now it's good to go. I had a comment a while ago about uh, the carpet around the speaker console and that the carpet should be over top of the lip at the base, which was my mistake. Uh, when I changed the speaker, I reinstalled the console on top of the carpet. So I thought I'd change it and honestly, uh, I think it looks a lot better this way and it's now correct. The last thing I want to do is investigate my leaky rear end and I'm not going to make another joke about that uh, but I, I always keep a tarp under iris in the garage and there's usually not a speck of oil especially after all the work I've done trying to make it oil drip free uh, but I have noticed this little puddle of gear oil and this is a couple of months worth of accumulation and I'm not exactly sure where it's coming from so I thought I'd get my camera under there to see what's up. Leaking oil is kind of like uh, leaking water. You never really know where the source is. It can be dripping far away from where the leak actually is. Um, and it can even defy gravity the way it moves around and, um, and then finally ends up dripping off the car. It looks to me as though that it's coming from the paper gasket between the diff carrier and the case 
and making its way to the drain plug. It's not coming from the axle seals or the breather assembly on the axle. Um, so I'll do a little bit more research and see how big of a job this is and what else I may want to do while I'm down there. Well folks, that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, and please do leave comments and questions. Um, I try to answer them all, and I really do enjoy uh, reading them. Um, so, until next time, thank you for yours.